Hi guys, welcome back to another episode of Says the Vet. Today we're explaining why your chook could be open mouth breathing. I'll kick it off with what to do in the immediate short term, so if she's in real respiratory distress, and then I'll jump into what might be going on. See you in a sec. Hi all, thanks for checking back in. I'm Dr. Says. Hey, before we jump in, please don't forget to subscribe if you're appreciating the videos. Thumbs up to let me know you're there. So today we're hitting up the reasons your chook might be open mouth breathing. Now if she's only occasionally open mouth breathing, it comes and goes, it's only a little bit, you can only just tell that it's happening and she's otherwise acting completely normal, eating normally, moving around, looking normal, you might have some time to think about what your next step is gonna be and to rule out some causes that are treatable at home. But if your chook is hunched down, fluffed up, wide open mouth breathing, comb turning darker, eyes squinting. This means she's in respiratory distress and cannot breathe. This is an emergency. She cannot oxygenate her body, she cannot breathe. She needs an avian vet, a bird vet, urgently, or the kindest option is euthanasia. I certainly do not recommend forcing deworming liquid into the open mouth of a bird that's open mouth breathing. She is very likely to breathe that fluid in and drown in it, or at the very least develop aspiration pneumonia. So if you have an open mouth breathing chicken, jump on a social media forum, sure, to ask for recommendations on vets that work comfortably with birds. Put her gently in a nice dark box, leave the kids and the dog at home, turn off the music in the car, get her to the vet as soon as possible and as quietly and stress free as possible. We don't want to give her any further cause for stress and make her struggle for oxygen any more than she already is. Okay, so let's jump into what could be going on. Spoiler alert, gapeworm is not at the top of my list. <laughs> so let's address heat stress first. This one's great because you can deal with it yourself. If temperatures go above this, they can become heat stressed and they start to act differently to try and deal with that stress. So egg productivity will drop, she may lose her appetite. At about 29 degrees Celsius, you'll be seeing open mouth breathing, dust bathing to try and push cold soil up under her wings up against that bare skin to cool her down. Now a heat stressed chicken looks quite different to a very unwell chicken. A very sick chook in the late stages of illness will hunch down, fluff up her feathers and try to conserve heat because she's in a critical state, her body temperature is dropping. A heat stressed chicken however will stretch out, hold her wings away from her body slightly to try and increase airflow to her skin. Now at 37 degrees, it will kill her. So if you think this might fit the bill, get her somewhere cool with airflow, but keep her calm. Stressing her out is gonna be dangerous in her state. But we need to cool her down urgently. Now don't just think about what Google says is the temperature outside today. Really think about where is she? So for example, if they're restricted to one side of the house where there's no wind, no airflow, and it's super sheltered there, the temperature can rise quite significantly. So next on the list is if you're hearing a hissing noise when she breathes, this can tell us that air is hissing through that upper respiratory tract, maybe her throat or her windpipe, because it's closed off somewhat. But this could be from a number of causes. Gapeworm would fit this bill, sure. It would have to be a pretty heavy burden to get to this stage. With gapeworm, you're more likely to see the early stages head shaking, stretching out of the neck, the pitch of her voice will change. Signs of discomfort that there's something in there. But it could be, if the, if the burden gets heavy enough, you can see open mouth breathing with gapeworm. Foreign bodies, sometimes a seed or pellet can lodge in the windpipe, either up here at the throat windpipe or down where it deviates into two and goes into the lungs. It gets narrow at that point so we can get things jamming in there. Sometimes she'll dislodge it on her own. Sometimes they need help from an avian vet. Now definitely open the mouth and have a look at the back of the throat. We can get poxvirus, the wet form, causing lesions in the back of the throat that block the airway as they get bigger. It's highly contagious, that virus, and it can be vaccinated against, so make sure you check for that. And then certainly if you've got multiple affected, we would be thinking about infectious causes like pox virus, for example, or aspergillosis, which is a fungal infection. And that too causes plaques forming in the windpipe, which can get bigger until they block the airway. So there's a few things that can block the airway up there. Let me reiterate though, if you've got a hen open mouth breathing and struggling for oxygen, do not go putting deworming liquid down her throat while she's in that state. She's very likely to inhale it and drown. A vet can inject a dewormer to cover her for gapeworm. 
um, and eliminate that risk of her inhaling it and then they can check her over and, and see what else is going on there as well. Now that's for a little open mouth breathing, often with a hissing noise from the mouth and throat, but it's not always that obvious, just to be warned. If she's in severe respiratory distress, big, wide mouth and struggling, we're much more likely to be looking at lung damage from bacterial or fungal pneumonia. Of course you can damage the lungs with toxic fumes and smoke, that sort of thing as well, but in outdoor chickens, it's much more likely an infectious pneumonia, especially if you have multiple, you're gonna be thinking, um, you know, is there something infectious here? Now, if she's in severe respiratory distress, she will certainly need a vet for sedation, an oxygen cage, and drugs to open up the airways to stabilize her before examining and treating her. When they're in that state, handling them can push them over the edge, so we always stabilize her first. Now, what is by far the most common cause of respiratory distress I see is fluid or masses in the abdomen. And this would not be something I bet that a lot of owners would think of. You see, birds have a really complex respiratory system to allow them to maximize on oxygen and fly at high altitudes, which is very cool. So they've evolved with a set of lungs, sure, but attached to those lungs are a number of sacs, and they're these pairs of air sacs. These air sacs live down in the abdomen. They're, they're quite large and they hold air, obviously. They're big chambers. So when we have anything in the abdomen that should not be there, whether that's tumors, um, egg bound with eggs backing up on each other uh, or fluid filling the abdomen. This pushes on the air sacs and takes up space where the air sacs are supposed to be. So she feels like she can't take a deep breath, which she can't. Now you might be able to tell yourself if the abdomen's too large and filled up with something. So look between her legs, behind, under the tail, below the vent. That relatively featherless undercarriage should be soft. If it's bulging and tight, it's probably filled with fluid. If there's masses on the inside but no fluid, you probably do need a cloacal exam from a vet to tell if there's something in there that shouldn't be. Now, if this is the case, regardless, she's going to need treatment. Nothing you can do at home is going to help her there, okay? Just to give you a bit of an idea, the vet will want to remove some of that fluid so that she can breathe easier, examine the fluid to know where it came from, um, and, then, and then go from there. So causes, common causes are, for example, heart failure, atherosclerosis isn't uncommon in older chickens, uh, liver disease or reproductive issues are some of the most common. Um, some of the repro issues are treatable, some are not. So I know that this was a lot of info guys and, and some of it probably wholly unnecessary detail for you at home. But as I say, my agenda is really to hone home how severe it is if a chicken is open mouth breathing, struggling for air. Rule out heat stress, deworm her if it's mild and intermittent. Wait for a calm patch to deworm her if you're putting it in the mouth. But really, she probably does need to see someone for treatment. And I stress an avian vet because not all vets are fully comfortable with treating birds. They're quite unique. So take her to a specialist or at least ask around to find a vet with a special interest in birds or poultry, okay? All right, guys, I'm gonna leave it there for now. Thanks for checking in. Don't forget to subscribe if you're appreciating them. Thumbs up so I know you're there and I'll see you in the next one.